Go ahead and open your Bibles to the first, uh, the, the epistle of 1 John, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 4. It is the church's um, scripture. Hallelujah. We're just going to, for whatsoever yeah. is born of God overcometh the world. For the, and this is the victory that overcometh yeah. the world, even our faith. Now, I like this. There's a lot here. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh. That means that the spiritual DNA in you is to win. Amen. I said, go ahead, and, guys, we, we kind of said this beginning, or maybe y'all missed it. Let's go ahead and start putting the scriptures back up, the whole things. Hallelujah. Thank you. If that's it. Just made that adjustment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Sometimes I, 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 I only I can take care of something right there on the spot because I'll forget afterwards. There we go. Thank you. Hallelujah. I kind of just wanted to go back to doing that. We had, we had tried to get you to bring your Bibles. Some people still won't bring in the Bible, so we're not going to deny everybody having that up there because some folks won't bring their Bibles. Bring your Bibles. Whether it's electronic. You see, I still have mine up here. See? And I, I also put my notes on my iPad. I take them off the Dropbox and, and make sure they're on here for the service just in case we lost the Internet. I'd be in trouble. <laughs> Uh, hey, I always want to back up. Hallelujah. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. If you're born of God, you are born a winner. Amen. It is your spiritual DNA to overcome. And then he goes on and says that the victory that we overcome with is our faith. Faith is able to look in the midst of adverse circumstances and situations and still see victory. Y'all here? Y'all, am I on? I'm on. Yeah, I'm on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Faith is able to look into the midst of adverse circumstances and still see victory. The Bible says of Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the shame of the cross. What, what joy did he see? He saw the end of his faith on the other side of what he was going through. <clears throat> I had a preacher one time I was listening to him and he said this. He said, man, when you're going through hell, don't stop. He says some Christians get out, pitch a tent, and have a picnic lunch. And just camp out there, whine and complain about how tough it is. Sit around and moan and groan about how devastated they are. Sit there in, that, in their, their, their tent in the middle of hell and just keep living there. Man, when you're going through it, don't stop. Why? Because if you keep going, you'll get to the other side. Amen. You keep going, you'll get around that thing, you'll get through it, you won't be, you, it won't take you down. So, now some of you need to break your tents down, break, break, as a matter of fact, just leave them there and go ahead and drive off. Get a new one when you get out. Amen. Get out on the other side. So, we're going to talk about this one. Actually, we're not going to cover all this. There's no way in the world we can cover this in one sermon. And so, we're going to go, we're, and then what we're going to do tonight, we'll pick up back here. We're just going to kind of go on Sunday until we finish this. But what to do? Now, this is not an original sermon by Ed Taylor. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Dad Hagen sermon. Hallelujah. But you know, it's going to come out different. But what to do when faith seems weak and victory lost? Hallelujah. Now, he got it out of uh, Dake's Bible. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, the, the notes for that, there are the, the, the points for that are right, right in there. Yep. So praise the Lord. No, no, nobody has anything original. It's all from the Spirit of God. Amen. Now, some just do it better. Dad did it really good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're, we're appreciative of that. We're going to talk about 10 things to do when faith seems weak and victory lost. How many of you have ever been there when your faith seemed weak? Well, yeah. Amen. How many of you have ever been there when it seemed like victory was lost? Amen. Yeah? All right. Well, you know what? You don't have to stay there. Amen. Now, I'm not going to ask you if you're there right now, but if you are, don't stay there. Yeah. Amen. We're going to give you 10 points, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to recognize the source. We're going to recognize two sources. We're going to recognize the source of the problem and the source of the answer. Most Christians get this mixed up. They think the source of the problem is God is trying to teach them something, and they think that the source of the answer is they got to work through it. Both of those are wrong. Let's look first of all at the source of your problem. It ain't Herman or Louise, or they just represent other people. Amen? 
John 10, 10. Jesus, after Jesus, Jesus says, uh, you know, that uh, his sheep know his voice, a thief enters in another way, he comes up another way, and he says this in John 10, 10, the thief, now who's the thief, God, guys? The devil. Cometh not but for two. Now here he says, there's, there, he's making a statement, there's only certain reasons the thief comes. Amen? To steal and to kill and to destroy. Stop. Is something in your life stealing? Is something in your life killing? Is something in your life destroying? The thief's doing it. It's the thief at work. Yes, he uses people, but those people are not the problem. Remember when Jesus said, uh, when Peter, when, when Jesus said uh, something about, I was going to go uh, you know, three days and three nights, and, you know, and I'll raise his body up again, and, and, and Peter says, not so, Lord. And Jesus turned around and looked at him. He didn't say, shut up, Peter. I command you to stop talking like that, did he? He looked at Peter and said the what? Get thee behind me, Satan. Didn't he? Isn't that what he said? He didn't, he didn't talk to the person. He talked to the spirit influencing him. You've got to understand who your enemy is and the source of your problems. Amen? So the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. So get you a piece of paper and draw you, th uh, uh, you know, draw four columns, but we're going to label three of them. Over one column, put kill. Over another column, put steal. Over another column, put destroy. Why? Because those are the things, and see, and see, you can categorize your life. Yeah. And in those columns, you can just put what's going on. Is it killing, stealing, or destroying? Write it underneath there. And then you kind of take one of those little squiggly mark things over top of those three things and put devil, a.k.a. the thief. You got, listen, let me, let me tell you something. If you're going to win battles, you got to know who you're fighting. Yeah, that's right. You got to know who you're fighting. Yeah, yeah right. That's good. Y'all hear? You've got to know who you are fighting. Amen. If you're fighting the wrong person, you're going to get your back in whooped. Amen? If I come over here and jump on Cam and it's Greg that's caused me the problems, he's going to get me from the backside. Uh -huh. While I'm beating on Cam, the devil's going to come clean my clock. I'll be distracted. Satan always does this. Yeah, go ahead. I'll be distracted with who the real enemy is fighting the wrong person. Right, that's right. And when you are distracted, you're open for sucker punches, blind punches. You're open to get hit across the head with a two-by-four. All kinds of stuff can happen because you're, you're not in the right combat mode with the right enemy. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Then Jesus says this. <clears throat> he makes an antithetical statement to that. The thesis is the enemy is the one that steals, kills, and destroys. His antithetical statement is that I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So your little fourth column put life. And right above that put Jesus. Now you can write down everything that's going on in your life. Right now, yep. categorize it. Still in killing, destroys, and calls in life, and you know who, the, who, you're, who, who where it's coming from, can't you? Real quick, where's it coming from? If it's the bad stuff, you can. see. We got the church going around telling everybody that the killing, still and destroying is under the column where Jesus is, but he he said it's the thief that does it. Now, who are you going to believe, Doctor Post Hole Digger? Or Jesus, the head of the church. Come on now. <clears throat> they might have THD, ED, PhD, I mean, uh, you know, MD, I mean, whatever kind of D you could put behind it. You know, sometimes it might mean dummy. <laughs> Amen. Now, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I, if I would just sit down and write, <laughs> I could have my PhD or, or doctorate of ministry, DM or whatever, you know, but hallelujah. <laughs> I just got to get busy and <laughs> write it. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm not against that. I've got my I've got bachelor's. I've got a master's. I've, you know, I've, worked, I've got, what, what, what do you used to say, Ph.D., A.B.D. All but dissertation. Well, there I am. <laughs> I'm Mr. A.B.D. <laughs> that, that's an actual, actual title, Ph.D., A.B.D. You're all but dissertation. Hallelujah. So, you know, I'm not against education, <laughs> but when the education stands in the way of Bible, 
<coughs> or education stands in the way of what Jesus said versus what they teach, then, I, then, then it just, it's got to mean dummy or post hole digger. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. The second person of the Godhead, the head of the church, he who was and is and is to come, said the thief comes and steals, kills, and destroys. He came to give life. I don't care what anybody else says. If it's killing, stealing, and destroying, it's come from the thief. Right. If it's producing life, it came from God. Yep. Why do you say that with such boldness? Because Jesus did. Amen. And I think he's a pretty good authority. Yeah, right. Amen. Look at 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking, walking about, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. <coughs> it did not say that the lion of the tribe of Judah was going around trying to devour folk. <coughs> it says that your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he wants you to th make you think he's something. Yeah. He wants you to make. He wants to make you think he's got something over on you. He wants you to think that he's big and bad and tough, but he's just as a roaring lion. Because there is a lion called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Can you say Amen? So here we have another verse that tells us it's the adversary that's looking to eat you up. Remember, uh, in Malachi chapter 3, bring you all the tithes in the storehouse and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and empty out on you a blessing that you shall, shall not have room enough to receive, and I will rebuke the devourer yeah. for your sake. That's what God said. Here Peter calls Satan a devourer. Hey, are y'all here? Y'all gone home. Amen. Satan is your, and then not only that, he says he's your adversary. God's not your adversary. Joe is not your adversary. Leroy is not your adversary. Heather is not your adversary. Satan is your adversary. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on now. That means Joey is not the one you're supposed to fight. Y'all getting this yet? Do you understand Satan may influence people, but they're simply vessels of his use at that moment. They are not your problem. It is the spirit in operation behind them. Now, I'm talking about when that's from people, but I'm telling you when circumstances are bad, it's, not, it's the devil behind it. Whether directly or indirectly, it is a satanic attack on your finances. Bit bodily. It's not because Jim had the cold and you got it. The devil's the one behind all sickness and disease. Are you here? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> Here we have three passages of Scripture, and the Word of God says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word be established. Yeah. That clearly make it understood to us that it is the kingdom of darkness, Satan and his cohorts, that are arrayed against you to cause you problems. Remember in Ephesians chapter 6, it also says this, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that... There's a reason. Ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Amen. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, and it goes on list the whole armor of God, all the different armor pieces. Paul using a Roman soldier armor as an allegory to how you're equipped as a child of God. But notice he said, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day understand that the, the enemy is coming against you. He's using situations. He's using people. But you've got to recognize, especially when it's people, this is the hardest thing for people to learn. And I think we all deal with it. I, I deal with it. You've got, you got, you got to sometimes grab yourself and shake yourself and say, it's not them. It's the Spirit operating in them. Amen. Yeah. It's the Spirit influencing them. 
Amen? Just like Jesus said, I could of myself do nothing. I only do those things which I see my Father do. People can't do the things and influence your life without Satan influencing them. Yeah. Amen. They're being influenced by Satan. Now, I'm sure Peter felt real good when Jesus looked at him and called him Satan. He, at least he thought he was. Get thee behind me, Satan. It'd be like me walking up to Greg right now. As Greg's doing something I didn't like, I'd say, Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> He'd get his feelings hurt. <laughs> Amen. But I don't, you know, when I'm dealing with something, I'm not, you, you've got to learn to deal with the right thing. You've got to understand the right source if you want to win. Right. Amen. Shooting them won't stop the devil. <laughs> I know, so know y'all, some of y'all, you like to shoot somebody. Or pull out a knife and stab them. Amen. <laughs> Hang on for part two. <laughs> it's a coming. <laughs> now, because of that, we're, we're going to have the, 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 the NNA, the National Knife Association, to combat knife control <laughs> in Congress. Or NKA, I'm sorry, NKA. <laughs> Can't even spell K-N, K-N-K. All right. The, the NKA, the, knife, the National Knife Association. Hallelujah. We're going to combat knife control in Congress. We're going to be able to have one longer than, than, a, than a pocket knife. All right. You, when we begin to think that we, if we can change, listen, we can change a circumstance. In other words, we leave our church and go to a different church. That's going to fit. See, it's not the church that's causing you problems. Uh -huh, right. If it was a church, other people there wouldn't be getting help. There's something that you're dealing with. If it's a person, it's not, if I can just get rid of them, I'll fix my problem. No, it won't. That devil will jump on somebody else and cause them to do the same thing to you. Y'all know I'm talking right. Yeah. Hello? You've got to recognize that Satan is the thief. Satan is the destroyer. Satan is your adversary. Nothing else. And until you realize that, you will not be able to deal with it properly. Why? Well, let's look. I'm, I'm going to jump to a different scripture here. Let's look over in, um, oh, I got to find it because I'm not, I just, I decided to do something different. Hallelujah. How many love Jesus and when I have to change, change gears? All right, let's look over. I didn't have this particular scripture in my notes. We're going to talk about the answer. Let's look in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll pick up in verse 3. Ah, we better start with verse 1. Now I, Paul, bese myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with the confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk, here, get this, write it down. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not, everybody say, do not, war in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Stop. If you're fighting a carnal battle against something that you think is going to set you free, you've lost. Not going to lose, you've lost. You lost the moment you stepped into that arena to fight it carnally. Yeah, right. Satan will whip your tush in that arena. Are you here? Yeah. Why? Because you're distracted with the wrong enemy. But listen, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't war after the flesh. But the weapons are not carnal, but what? They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You understand that when you're fighting these battles, whether it's a circumstantial situation, whether it's a person, whether it's a financial thing, when you are fighting it carnally, you have lost. 
as a born-again believer, as a child of God, anointed by the Holy Ghost, born of God, what? This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Having all that in us, you are designed to fight your battles different. Why are you going to fight them different? Because you're going to fight them and win. You will not win the battle carnally. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world. You fight on Satan's playground, he's going to whip you. You have to fight it in the arena where you can win. And you are designed to win. God designed you to win. He did not design you to fight Satan's game, Satan's way. You fight it according to God's rules and you win. Come on now. You've got to fight it according to God's rules. Now, amen? Well, 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always calls us to triumph in Christ. What is Christ? Christ means the anointed one. You win your battles in the anointing, not in the flesh. Paul said it, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. Can I get a couple better amens out there? Amen. Help me. Okay. Toes prayed for after church. <coughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> Hallelujah. We cause us to triumph in Christ, in the anointed one and his anointing. It is the anointing that sets you in the position to win. Fighting it in the flesh, you will not win. Hello. Amen. It's been like I said earlier, you've already lost. You've got to rise above that situation, situation, circumstance, people, persons, things, issues. Get out of the flesh and get over into the spirit. Get over into the anointing. Hallelujah. And there we're there. He always causes you to triumph. Amen. But it doesn't look like I'm going to win. Uh-uh. We walk by faith and, come on now, you're, and not by sight. I'm going to tell you, Satan will be on your shoulder telling you, ah, uh, you better do this this way, you're going to lose. Yeah. He'll even call you my son or my daughter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've given you the, 40, the, the 357 Magnum, the most powerful handgun on the earth. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello? And you, and you tell your friend or the person giving you problems, well, do you feel lucky today, punk? Uh -huh. Is this your lucky day? <laughs> Everybody saw Dirty Harry. Hallelujah. It's the dirty, dirty head. <laughs> dirty head. Oh. Oh, this is the 357 Mag, the most powerful handgun on the planet. Do you feel lucky to get punk? <laughs> Hallelujah. I got to know. I got to know. Boom. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil will tell you, he'll tell you to fight carnally. He'll tell you to fight in the flesh. And you'll, you'll, you'll feel like, and I'm going to tell you something. You know this, whether it's fighting a situation like this, or if it's believing you receive a financial need met in the middle of a financial battle. It seems like it's easier for you to go out and do it yourself because you, I got to do something. Sure you do. What you don't got to do is war in the flesh. You need to get a hold of the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal, but mighty through God. So the pulling down of those strongholds. And then you need to feel, understand this. That in Christ, I'm going to say it backwards, in Christ, God always causes you to triumph. Therefore, we give him thanks. In Christ, he always causes us to triumph. Whew. Now, there's where the rest is. There, therefore, remaineth a rest unto the people of God, Hebrews chapter 10. Amen? Uh -huh. When we've entered into faith, we've entered into rest. See, it takes faith to realize I can step back into Christ and he causes me to triumph and I, and, and I can't, because I can't do it in the natural. I got to get over into the spirit. 
and fight my battles with the Word of God and receiving from heaven that I have the victory. Amen? Glory to God. And makes manifest the savor of his knowledge to us in every place. Psalm 46, uh, look over there. Psalm 46. I'm quite sure by just looking at that, I left off a verse when I was fixing my notes. Hallelujah. Psalm 46, 1 and 2. And I can't go fix it right now. It takes too long. Y'all with me? You're, you're turn, I don't hear Bibles turning. Turn your Bible pages. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Stop. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. God is my refuge and what? My strength. I'm t and let me tell you something, how you know if you're fighting in the flesh or fighting in the anointing is, where's your strength? Y'all just sitting there looking at me. If you've been, if you're zapped of strength and you just can't go on anymore, you're fighting carnally. Why? Because the anointing will charge you. The anointing will strengthen you. Amen? <coughs> God is my refuge and what to say next? God is your what? Strength. Your refuge and your strength. strength. A very present help in trouble. What did he say? Therefore. What? Look there and see what's there for. That's right. If God is my refuge and strength, if God is my very present help in trouble, I will not fear. Therefore, we will not fear. See, the reason I will not fear is God is my refuge and God is my strength and God is my very, listen to this, very present. He didn't just want to, he didn't want to just leave it at, he's your present help. He's your very present help. Amen. Come on, church. I said, he's your very present help. Where? In trouble. See, most folks think God's around when everything's going hunky-dory. No, 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 no. God is your refuge. God is your strength. God is your very present help when you're in trouble. So therefore, this is, this is, this is where you go. In Christ, God always calls me to triumph because he's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear Listen to this. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be cast in, or carried into the midst of the sea. Remember that song we used to sing? God is my refuge and God is my strength. A very present help in trouble. God is my refuge and God is... It's just good to sing courses like this. God is my strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore I will not fear. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. It's just good to ride around and sing stuff like that. Yeah. I said, it's good to ride around and sing stuff like that. It'll, be, it'll, get, you, it'll get you when the devil shows up. <laughs> You'll be going, <clears throat> Woo! Glory! God is my refuge and God is my... You, you've got to understand who the enemy is and who your source of victory is. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this. Your source of victory is not three jobs. Your source of victory is not, you know, moving to another church or moving to another country. See, folks think if they just, well, you know what, if I just go to a different church, no, you'll get your honeymoon period, and eventually things will get just like they were here. Why? Because you're there. And you didn't deal with what was going on when you left. Hello? I know about people, people, you know, people who leave mad and ugly and, you know, make accusations and all that kind of stuff. Well, the real problem is, listen, and then you got people sitting down there going, man, that's the best stuff I've ever heard about. Like, I mean, they got to get the next jerking because it's so good. Well, then it's not the person. You go move it off somewhere else. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to run into that same problem eventually. Hello? 
got to deal with it. You got to recognize the source. Amen. And then you got to recognize the answer is not making stupid changes other than changing how you're fighting your battle. You got to change how you fight. You got to know who your enemy is, and you got to know who your deliverer is, and you got to know what your weapons are and what they are not. It might make you feel better to knock them out. But how are you going to feel sitting behind bars? You may dream of shooting them. Stop that. Hello, stop it. You need to stop it. Right. Your entertaining thoughts are going to get you in trouble. Yeah, they do. Right. It, might, it, might, it might give you a soulless release, but it doesn't deliver you spiritually. Amen? Psalm 41.10. Fear thou not. Why? For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, because I am thy God. This is what God says. It's a reiteration of some of these things again. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Ooh. Ooh. Folks, if you're fighting with carnal weapons, if you're running yourself ragged trying to figure out how to fix this mess and you're not resting in God and you're not getting into faith and you're not winning your battles in the Spirit, you will never know victory. But if you'll make an adjustment and you'll recognize that Satan is your enemy, he's the source of your problems. Whether directly or indirectly, he is the source. And the answer lies in the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, but mighty. Ever say mighty? Mighty. But this kind of makes you feel Pentecostal all over. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Are y'all here? I mean, make you want to shout. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Have church. When you begin to realize, how many done this? You've reached the end of everything you know to do. You know how to fight. You know how to fix. You know how to manipulate. You know how to do whatever. You've reached the end of it and you still haven't won. Yeah. Take joy. Take joy. Everybody say, everybody say take, I take joy. I take joy. Take joy in the knowledge. When you, you've reached the end of you, that's okay. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. The greater one on the inside, hallelujah, will strengthen you, will help you, will sustain you. Glory to God. He'll put you over and cause you to win. <coughs> now that you've tried it your way, let's do it God's way. I actually have four people running at least by now. It won't bother me when you run, all right? Don't just, you know, say, well, I've come here. I ain't never seen anybody run. Don't bother me. It will not bother me if you run. Matter of fact, I might take them and go with you. Anyway, fear thou not. Some of you have been afraid that you're going to lose. Some of you have been afraid you're going to go under. Some of you have been afraid that you're not going to make it. God says, don't fear. Because here's the reason. I'm with you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Glory to God. Amen. If God be for me, who can be against me? And not only is God with you, he's going to do something while he's there. He's not just hanging out watching you, you know, get your back in whooped and enjoying it. Hello? He says, I'm with you in this. I'm going to do something. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to help you. And I'm going to uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. 
Oh, glory to God. There ain't no devil in hell won't show up and mess with the right hand of righteousness. Are you here? God said, I'm going to strengthen you, I'm going to help you, and I'm going to uphold you. You ought to be writing that stuff down and riding out, going by. I remember one time when Janie was, uh, uh, we were early in marriage, she was dealing with some stuff, and she took little note cards and, and wrote, them, wrote them out, different scriptures, and put them up on her sun visor. Every time she stopped at a stoplight, she'd pull one down and read it, and then put it back up. And just kept meditating. When Belinda was going with her, she was going through, she had a bunch of note cards. And she was meditating on healing scriptures, pulling those note cards out. It's good to write stuff down and keep it before you. Now, showing up this Sunday morning and leaving here ain't going to help you if you don't keep applying to this and keep staying fresh in this. You're going to have to keep feeding on this. Just here this morning, I'll do it. Yeah, right, right, right. Amen. This, this, this message is to jumpstart you to get in there and do this. Amen. Going home, going, well, Pastor Ray had a good message this morning. What did he pre well, he said something about the devil's my problem and God's my answer, but I don't remember anything else. Well, that's a good start. But you're going to have to get in there and find out these scriptures. And when the enemy comes in, you just say, oh, hallelujah. God is my refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. Though the earth be removed and the mountains cast into the midst of the sea, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid because God is with me. He strengthens me. He helps me. He upholds me with the right hand of his righteousness. And I give him thanks because my God always causes me to triumph because I walk in the spirit. I walk in the anointing, the anointed one. I walk in him, glory to God, and I walk in the spirit and I don't fight my battles in the flesh. I fight them by the word of God and by the Holy Ghost and I win. Amen. It'll transform your life. It'll transform your circumstances. It'll transform what you're going. Now listen, the devil ain't just going to get up and pack up and leave just because you came out and said, I got it. Praise God, I'm going to get after the devil. <clears throat> Some of your places, he has set up camp, not out, in the, not out in the work shed and not out in the stall with the horses. He's in your bedroom on a, on a hideaway. Are you here? Set up camp, thinks he has the right to be there. You're going to have to run him off. Yeah. I said, you're going to have to run him off and keep him off. But you're not going to be able to do that by throwing the person out the door or killing them. Yeah. You're going to have to do it by dealing with the devil. Smith Wigglesworth, you, you kind of along this line, used to tell a story about this, this woman. She was coming to get on the bus there in London, and she had this little dog. The little dog came down the sidewalk with her, and she said, now, honey, you can't stay here. You've got to go home. And that dog just kept running around, you know, his little, little fruit fruit dog of some type. I don't know, if you like fruit fruits, I'm not a fruit fruit dog person. Now, I don't, and it's most of the time I don't even think they're cute, especially when they're wet. They're like rats, rat rugs. I mean, that's where the term rug rat came from. But you know, they're like rats. And some of you love those little fruit fruit things, little bows in their hair, and their, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It just don't work for me. All right? But this little fruit fruit dog was running around her feet, just loving on her, because that's her master. You know? You're Satan's master when you're in the spirit. And the bus was coming. She said, now go on, go on home. You go, go on home. And that dog just kept staying there. And finally, the bus doors opened up, and she said, and I said, get! That dog was, beep, 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 ran off with his tail between his legs back home. See, somebody's been talking too nice to the devil. Please leave me alone. Please stop. If you just leave me alone, I, 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 won't even, I won't even up my giving for God. I'll just, I'll just stay like I am if you just leave me alone. Trying to work out, you can't work out a deal with the devil. No, you can't. All the nice talks. Not, you're just going to get the point you said, I said get in Jesus' name. And take your ground and stand your ground. If you're going to win, we're going to win the battles. Because yeah, now we know who our source is of the problems, don't we? Yeah. Now, there's other things we're going to cover. Uh, next week, we're going to be sure that we have promises from God that cover what we're asking for, what we're dealing with. Got to have Bible. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Hello? I said, you got to have Bible. Well, not next week, tonight. We're going to get into that tonight. So, come out tonight. Well, it's a lot. Listen, I'll tell you what. This is a series you need to be here for. I did about preach myself happy this morning. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. So here we are. We've got to recognize the source of our problem. It's the devil. John 10.10, 10, 1 Peter 5.8, and Ephesians 6.12. Of our answer, God's our answer. 2 Corinthians 2.14, Psalm 46.1 and 2, and Isaiah 41.10. God is your answer. Satan's your problem. Now get in there and get after it and win the battle. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you. You've given us this message to speak to the people. And I I think they're encouraged and strengthened, and there's a, there, there is a, a substance by the, from the Spirit, for the Spirit of God to minister to their hearts and, and take this and work in their lives to bring them into victory. In Jesus' name, amen.